So today let's take a look on how to set up the AEM AQ1, or specifically the AEM AQ1 OBD2 devices for data logging. So currently we are connected to the AQ1, you can see that by going into the lower left hand corner and see that it says AQ1 connected. Next to that you'll see the word idle, that's just telling you that currently we're in standby mode, it's not data logging right now. If it was data logging it would say logging in the lower left hand corner and also if there was some sort of memory card issue it'd be telling you that down there also. So currently we're looking at our input channel overview right now. This is where we choose different kind of inputs for our AQ1 and decide which one to data log. But let's go ahead and start with OBD2. So we can go down here to OBD2 parameter IDs and what we're going to do first is click connect to vehicle. So this will scan the OBD2 CAN and then tell us what channels are available. As you can see here, it's only available for cars 2008 and newer, since it's available for only CAN OBD vehicles. There might be some cars past 2008 that this might work on, but that will be a case-by-case -case basis. So let's go ahead and continue and click Connect to Vehicle. So here are all of our different channels. Sometimes you can see this plus icon there. That just means that there are more channels within this particular ID. So if we were to click on one here, you can see that there's just a few more, you know, Bank 1, Bank 3. So essentially we're going to run through this list and see what channels we want to log. As we select through these, you'll see that our data rate up there will change. So up here it will show you fast, medium, and slow in samples per second. It's currently showing pretty high numbers since nothing is selected right now. So let's go ahead and pick a few channels that we care about here. Let's go ahead and pick intake manifold pressure. We'll do RPM, speed, ignition timing advance, throttle position, fuel rail pressure. We can also look at lambda here, cool temp, intake temp. So now that we've selected a few channels, you can see that the data rates have changed a bit. And what we may want to do here is select a different sampling rate for each one of these channels. So for RPM, we're going to definitely want that at a fast rate, so we'll change it to that. Same with intake manifold pressure, but something like coolant temperature we could change to slow. That'll just allow for more data to be captured without slowing down the bus. It also won't fill up the memory card as quickly. So now that we've chosen everything, you can see that the AQ1 is predicting that we'll be able to reach 333 hertz on our fast channels. Now of course, it may not always be those numbers, it always depends on what kind of car you got. So now that we've selected that, we can go ahead and go to our accelerometer, then verify that these numbers here are correct. You may need to adjust the position of the AQ1 based on how it's installed, so you can go ahead and do that by clicking choose and calibrate, and then choosing a sample rate up there. Typically for accelerometers, you're going to want a pretty fast sample rate so 50 is a pretty good start so if you do want to go ahead and data log that let's go ahead and click enabled for battery voltage we'll go ahead and turn that on as well if you have a GPS that's connected to the AQ1 via the serial, then you can connect that here also. Now in addition to being able to log the OBD2 data, you can hook analog or digital or frequency inputs directly into the AQ1. So if you have any of those inputs, you can click on the corresponding input that you wired it to, and then set it up through there. So for instance, let's say we hooked up another oil pressure sensor to analog 1. We'll go ahead and enable it, and then name it oil pressure. And then for sample rate, 50 Hz is still pretty good. For sensor wizard, we'll go ahead and see if ours is in here. If not, you can go ahead and add it manually, but it should be in here. Right now we're looking for pressure sensor. And you can see that all the AEM sensors here are listed by part number. So this one right here is pretty common for oil sensors. We're gonna go ahead and use that one. We'll go ahead and click okay. And once you do that, you'll see that it's already set up our scaling for voltage versus pressure. Now currently our sensor isn't plugged in, so it's only showing 5 volts. If we were to actually plug in the sensor, then we'd get some real meaningful data here. But right now it looks like it's all good and ready to set up. So right now we're able to configure the logging conditions for the AQ1. So we'll go ahead and click on Input Channel Overview on the top. And again, this gives us an overview of all the channels that we've selected for data logging. So right now it's OBD2, accelerometer, battery voltage, and another one just for analog 1. Analog 1 being oil pressure. Now for logging conditions, there's a few different ways that we can do this. You can use battery voltage, you could for instance use the speed from the GPS, but let's go ahead and make it simple and we'll use OBD2 data, specifically engine RPM. So you could say for instance engine RPM is greater than 150. So essentially anytime that the engine is running, the AQ1 will be logging. So we'll go ahead and click save. And now the AQ1 is ready to start logging whenever the RPM is above 150. And actually right now, since the engine is running, you can see that we are currently logging. So now we'll go ahead and turn off the engine, which will tell the AQ1 to stop recording data. And then we'll go ahead and download that data and then open it up inside our data software, AEM data. So now that the engine is off, you can see that it says idle down there in the corner. 
and you can also see that it's automatically downloading the files. Right here you can also pick exactly where you want to save the log file. So we'll go ahead and click open the last downloaded log in AEM data, and then we'll click OK. Now let's go ahead and do a new project. So now we see our OBD data and our oil pressure channel. So now all you gotta do is take any channel that you want and drag it onto the plot. And there we go. If you have any questions, make sure to let us know in the comments below, or visit us at our website at aemelectronics.com.